This is Joven Jones, and you're looking at Extra Time TV. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Soklal and today, you know, I'm not alone on the set. Joining us, you know, uh, the Bahamas uh, assistant coach, Mr. Kevin Davies. I know you're in a good mood today. Uh, how are you today? I'm in a great, I'm in a great mood today. Uh, I, I promise the guys that if, if we won yesterday, I'd shave all of my face. Ah. So as you, as you can see, I, I shaved my beard and mustache. Um, I was going to shave my legs as well, but I told him he only had a draw, so I couldn't shave my legs. <laughs> compromise. It's all about compromise. You know, uh, <laughs> well, for me, it's the opposite because, yeah, you know, obvious, obviously in a Trinidad Tobago, um, you know, headed into this game, you know, by some people as favorites. And, you know, now my beard is growing out. So, you know, the opposite is, uh, is taking place on my end. But, uh, you know, first off, you know, let's uh, head into the questions, uh, you know, I know essentially uh, right now you're the assistant coach, but what are we you know, to really step in because Bahamas, uh, you know, heading into this game, you know, it was tough conceding a lot of goals. I believe it was uh, maybe about 15, I believe. Uh, you know, it was looking tough. And, um, you know, that last game against Puerto Rico was a difficult one. And many people, wrongfully so now, thought that, you know, it was going to be an assured victory for Trinidad Tobago. Um, what was your mindset after the Puerto Rico game uh, heading into this particular game? Well, uh, my mindset was to put that behind us, uh, learn from our mistakes, uh, try to fix some things. Uh, 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 clearly, we made uh, quite a few mistakes. Um, uh, we were, I think we consistently made the same mistakes, uh, mm -hmm. which allowed Puerto Rico to score a lot of goals. Puerto Rico was a, a very good team, not to take anything away from them. They were a very good team. Um, they were very, very organized, and we were very disorganized. Um, so what we, uh, what we had to do in the short time that we had to do it was, was just fix those mistakes. We allowed Puerto Rico to attack us through the middle, and, and that's, I'm absolutely certain that Trinidad was watching the game, and I think they thought that they would be able to do the same thing. Uh, but we closed down. We, you know, our intention was to close down the middle and allow them to attack from the wings, which... For the most part, we were successful doing. Um, of course, Trinidad is a very good team. Not to take anything away from from you know from those guys, uh, but we were able to shut down the middle. Uh, we, they, I mean, they broke us down a few times, and they weren't able to finish some of the chances that we had. You know, my young goalkeeper had uh, the game of his life. I made some some excellent saves and and, and kept us in the game. And I think, uh, you know, once you you make that first save and, you know, you get your confidence and his confidence started to grow and, you know, the goal became smaller for him. Um, you know, and uh, I think luck follows effort and uh, my guys, you know, they gave, they gave all that they had and I, I think we were, you know, we were lucky on one or two chances, you know, you guys hit the post. Um, but like I said, you know, I think luck follows effort and, you know, it was there. It was there today. Yeah, you know, and you all cannot be faulted. Uh, just looking at the game, you can see the effort on the players and the determination. You know, the the tactical setup. You know, worked wonders because the Trinidad Tobago midfield uh, did not have much luck at all in the um, in the middle. And as you rightfully said, you know, they were forced out wide. And I mean, sure, they created some chances, but you know, so did you all. And you know, it could have easily have been uh, a smash and grab victory. Uh, for uh, it could have been three points. So you know, seeing this result, um, you know, such a such a jump, you know, in progression, which is I guess what a lot of coaches look at when they're evaluating players. You know, con from conceding a whole bunch of goals, uh, and then immediately afterwards getting a very strong result, definitely must have a good effect on the team. And 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 moving forward, you know, is this uh, the building blocks for something in the future for the, the Bahamas national football team? Uh, def definitely, um, we could see um, see the progression over a very short period of time, which shows that you know we have the the talent to do it. We just have to 
to continue to, to build it. Um, we had uh, some very young players on the field. I, in fact, uh, one of my midfielders is still in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, the goalkeeper, he is about to go off to university. Uh, one of the other midfielders, he's about to go off to university. So, you know, we had a pretty, pretty young team. Um, very, very impressed with those guys, uh, you know, especially to play against the level of competition as, as Trinidad has. I mean, uh, Trinidad, you know, you guys were a pretty organized team. I mean, you know, you just weren't able to break us down consistently and, and not take full advantage of the opportunities that you had. Yep, you know, and uh, so, you know, we spoke about the mentality heading into the game and we spoke about the tactics and, you know, we touched on also the future of, uh, you know, the national team. Uh, in terms of uh, some standout performances, you know, you mentioned the goalkeeper as well and also your, your d- the defensive uh, centre-back pairing were very much impressive. Um, you know, what was the, you know, response to achieving such a result? What does it mean for the players? You know, we, we spoke about the general sense but from the players, you know, what was the feeling like in the locker room or wherever you guys went because you know, of the COVID rules? What was the atmosphere like of the players afterwards? Uh, well, I, I don't want to speak about the COVID rules because I'm absolutely certain that we broke every one of those rules <laughs> in the celebration. Okay. But I mean, the, the mood was, was, was absolutely uh, fabulous. I mean, in my lifetime... Uh, I think the only other time that I've really had that experience was when we beat Jamaica 1-0 and, and under 23s. Uh, but, I mean, the feeling was great. I'm not sure if all of the players fully grasp what we achieved yesterday. Um, I mean, that's it, it, huge for, for Bahamas football uh, history. You know, that's it's actually the, the best result we have had against uh, one of the top teams in, in the region ever. Yes, and you know, congratulations uh, to you all on that because the thing um, I could say that will be positive from this is that the players, the young ones that you said may, may not fully grasp it yet, they will probably, uh, you know, this does wonders for their, you know, their self-esteem because, you know, like, you know, winning and getting good results is a habit. So, you know, that baseline for confidence is there that, you know, you, you guys could run, but, you know, pretty much anyone, you know, because... Statistically, and we did this in our preview, you know, on paper, because we, all, we both know as, you know, you as a coach know that the game is not played on paper. <laughs> it's always <laughs> 11 men versus 11. And, and generally, um, you know, some stereotypes apply. But yesterday showed that, you know, if you have a good team plan, a collective effort, um, and you get things right, you know, any, anybody can get a result. Um, it, it's not really necessarily about the players, but, you know, it's about individuals, but it's about the team and, and the tactics. And, you know, like I said, I said this about five times, you know, congratulations for getting it right. You know, um, you know, I understand what it feels like uh, being on the other end sometimes, you know, like when Trinidad Tobago knocked out the U.S. Um, from the 2018 World Cup. So, you know, I'm really happy for you guys. And, you know, one, one thing I'd like to add, um, has the COVID-19 situation it has affected everybody in the, the preparations, including Trinidad Tobago as well. Um, with all these conditions, you know, that have changed the preparation for a game. Heading into these games, how much has COVID-19 affected you all entering this uh, qualifying stage? Well, like you said, it, 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 you know, it's affected everybody worldwide. Um, I, think, I think what it really, the, the biggest effect that it's had is that you know, the, the, the personal contact that you have with each other, we have to be very mindful of, you know, mindful of that. Uh, sometimes I think it's, uh, it's overblown, especially in, in our football world, because we're always in contact anyway. So I think, you know, if one person has it, everybody's going to get it just because the nature of, of the game um, and, and in, the, in the preparation, it, it's difficult. It's difficult at times to keep people separated. You know, you, especially as a coach, sometimes, you know, you just want to go put your arm around a player and, and say something. Well, uh, I'm absolutely certain I broke all of those rules yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, as far as preparation and training, you know, there's so many protocols. You, everybody's taking a, a temperature check before they come into the stadium. You got to have on your mask and you, know, you keep your mask on until you step onto the field. I mean, all of these, you know, it's... Yeah, it, it, I'm sure I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And, you know, I'm sure everybody's just tired of especially the mask wearing. 
Yes, it is. It is a unprecedented situation which has affected everyone, but uh, you know it has really forced people to reinvent themselves. So you know this result. Going back to the result, is this uh, the ignition? You know, the spark that possibly could ignite. You know, uh, uh, something in the with Bahamas football. Well, what do you think about that? I, I, I'm, I'm cert- I'm certain it will. Um, I'm certainly going to do everything and in, in, within my power to. to see that it does start or continue to, to build on something that has already started. Um, you know, we just, we just need to, to stop talking about it and just do it, you mm-hmm. know, just get the job done. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we have a lot of talent out there. You know, we have a very small population and our, our, our pool to choose from is, is certainly not a, a large pool. So the talent that we, we do have, we need to, to harness it and, and, continue to, to to grow it yes and you know uh you know moving forward um you know obviously you know the 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 campaign did not go really well and you know but it ended on what i consider you know a high note uh your assessment as a coach i mean we we, we touched on this already but just to end things off with a final conclusion Started off, you know, a, a lot of people were saying, you know, that it was going to be a short point, short three points against Bahamas to now in one of the crucial games. Because a lot of people, which thankfully it was not us, I'll send you a link, uh, you know, you can check out our preview where I, I, I told people never say never in, in football. Um, I think I was probably the only one who said that. So <laughs> uh, I, have to, I have to be careful that people don't, you know, accuse me of betraying my country. But, you know, we try to analyze the game because that scenario is exactly one of the scenarios you could never ignore. You know, that's just how the game is. But your overall assessment of, uh, you know, the team's performance in terms of progression, um, not just that result, but in the group, what, you know, how do you assess that moving forward? Well, uh, the, the funny thing is, I, I only recently joined the team uh, probably three or four weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't. I haven't. I haven't been intimately involved in, in in within the team and actually following all of you know all of the the, the results and the stats and all of that. I, I actually only got to watch a little bit of. Uh, I think it was Trinidad and Puerto Rico game. And I, I watched a lot of the highlights from our game against Puerto Rico to, to see what we can do to, to improve. But uh, I mean, overall, like you said, it, it, at the end of the day, it was a, a, a great result, a great way to finish, finish the group. Uh, you know, I had a lot of friends hit me up yesterday after the game and, mm. and asking me, what did I say to the players to, you know, to get them prepared? And I mean, you know, really, I mean, I don't think I said anything special. Yeah. I, I simply, you know, I simply said, you know, we all men, you put on our pants one leg at a time and, you know, you just got to go out and fight. Yep. You know, it, it's, it's, it's there for the taking. I said, you know, we, we, we can shock the world today. I said, you know, we can, we can really, and I, I, I had a feeling, I had a feeling. And when I was in Puerto Rico, you know, the feeling was, I had the same feeling and, you know, they scored two goals in 15 minutes and it kind of took the, the wind out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the guys fought to the end. I had that same feeling yesterday, and I said, "You know what? I'm going to keep it to myself." I didn't even tell my wife. I, you mm-hmm. know, I kept it to myself, and I said, "You know what? I, I have a very good feeling about today." And and as we were walking into the, the locker room at halftime, I said, "You know what? It's right there. I can I can smell it. It's right there. I can taste it." And you know, I, I've been in the situation before, you know, we walked on the field and I underestimated an opponent. And I, I think Trinidad clearly underestimated what we could achieve. And, you know, I really don't blame them based on, on, on the result that we had uh, last week. And once, you, once you're in that mode, it's, it's very, very hard to get out of it, you know. And I think as the game progressed, they got a little tighter and a little tighter and, and pressed and pressed and pressed. I mean, right at the end, I mean, it was almost like we were playing in, in our own 18, you know. Yeah. So it, it was just like you said, it's just one of those days when, you know, everything went right. You know, the ball bounced our way. And, you know, like I said, I think luck follows effort. And, and we certainly were lucky in a, a few chances. And I think our effort as well 
uh, helped us. I mean, you know, my guys really fought. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, I, as a lot of these guys, I, I, I coached from U12. I've seen some of them go off to college, get their degrees. I mean, I'm so proud of some of these guys. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, this, and this is why I do it, you know, just to, just to see guys succeed and become, and become good men of society. Yes, you know, because one thing everybody didn't notice, you know, I'm, I'm listening to the Trinanta Bego forums, all the reactions, because we have our reaction coming up as well. It's that they looked very focused. And, you know, you answered the question for me before I could ask it, which is great. <laughs> they, they, they looked focused, you know, and even, you know, you looked relaxed. So, you know, it's interesting to hear your perspective, what was going through your mind, because the team looked relaxed. And is it that also heading into the game with no pressure, you know, um, the, the fact that, you know, mathematically, you all know what was happening. It took away a lot of the pressure that would normally be associated to get the results. So the players were free to express themselves of, and they had, you know, they did not have the burden of expectation. Did that help as well? It did, it did. You know, and I, I said to them, I said, you know, just go out and relax. Mm -hmm. Make mistakes. Mistakes happen. But, you know, go and express yourself. Show, you know, show yourself. I mean, we had, we had nothing to lose. Yeah. Right? And, and, you know, I always say, you lose one zero, you lose ten zero, you still lost. You know, at the end of the day. So, mm -hmm. you know, not that I, you know, not that I want to concede ten goals, but you know, it it is what it is. And you know, they, I I think they were relaxed because they they all played in Puerto Rico, especially the, the younger guys. Uh, um, like I said, the the center midfield. This is the first game starting. The, the the guy that played on the right midfield. This was his. Second game starting the goalkeeper. I think this was his third start in goal. And, you know, to play against the, the team, the, the caliber of, of Trinidad, uh, you know, I think playing in Puerto Rico kind of took away some of their nerves. Mm -hmm. So they were much more relaxed and, and you know, were able to, to, to do what they did. Wow, very interesting. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, I would love to have a chat about this because, you know, even though we were on the receiving end of uh, Toronto Bigos on the receiving end of uh, a result that wasn't favorable, it's always amazing for people to hear these stories, you know, stories that are often not told, you know, by everyone. So this is an amazing um, achievement. And I'm assuming the start of uh, this will be the turning point where, where you'll look back and say, this is where... The turnaround began, you know, when, when the new thing began. So, listen, uh, it's been a huge pleasure. And we'll definitely like to have some more discussions about, you know, the, the football association, the plans of the team and, you know, things moving forward. Because at EXTV, we like to reach out to all the Caribbean, not just Trinidad and Tobago, and discuss football. Because football is something that unites us all, especially in this difficult time. It's great to hear the perspectives from people like yourself and many others. So, it's been a huge pleasure. And for the fifth or sixth time, I would like to say congratulations to you and your players. It was a commendable resp uh, response and uh, performance. And uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, taking the time today to join us from your, your celebrations. Okay, and, and thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Just to remind everyone, for more episodes with Shaka Hislop, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.